We will continue with part three of the assessment and care of the newborn. Early in gestation, the immune system of the fetus is developing the capacity to respond to foreign antigens. The development of the immune system is necessary to equip the neonate to meet the numerous environmental challenges that are associated with life in the extrauterine world. The immune system isn't fully activated until after birth. The inflammatory response is limited. Signs and symptoms of infection are subtle and nonspecific. Newborns have poor hypothalamic response to pathogens. Fever is not a reliable indicator of infection. Um, usually signs and symptoms would be lethargy, irritability, poor feeding, vomiting, or diarrhea, decreased reflexes, pale or mottled skin, apnea, tachypnea, grunting, or respiratory retractions. In newborn period, the hypothermia is a more reliable indicator of an infection. They could also experience seizures, hypoglycemia, apnea, bradycardic events. So we'll check a CBC, a CRP, and a blood culture. Passive acquired immunity, uh, immunoglobulin G from mom is passed to the baby in utero. It occurs during the third trimester. Those that are born less than 34 weeks are more susceptible to infection. And then the length of protection actually varies. Immunoglobulin M starts production at 10 to 15 weeks of gestation. Elevated levels suggest an in utero stimulation or placental leak. Uh, sources could be such as syphilis or torch syndrome. Lack of immunoglobulin M increases susceptibility to gram enteric uh, bacterial such as E. coli. Immunoglobulin A does not cross the placenta. Immunoglobulin A is actually for protection of the uh, secreting surfaces of the respiratory tract, the D GI tract, and the eyes. Colostrum is very high in immunoglobulin A. And finally, newborns will make their own immunoglobulin A in their intestinal mucosa four weeks after birth. Healthy newborns differ in their activity levels, feeding patterns, sleeping patterns, and responsiveness. Parents' reactions to their newborns are often determined by these differences. Showing parents the unique characteristics of their infant helps them develop a more positive perception of the infant and promotes increased interaction between infant and parent. Infant responses to environmental stimuli and to their caregivers depends on the infant's state or state of consciousness. Sleep states, there are deep or quiet sleep and light sleep, usually when REM occurs. The length of cycle depends on the age of the newborn. Growth hormone secretion depends on regular sleep patterns. Then we have the alert states. The first 30 to 60 minutes after birth, many newborns display quiet alert state. Nurses should use alert states to encourage bonding and breastfeeding. Then there is increasing wakefulness that indicates maturing ability to maintain consciousness. Behavioral and sensory capacities uh, depend on the gestational age and the maturity of the baby. And the ability to self-soothe depends on the baby. They bring hands to their mouth, maybe a pacifier, swaddling, um, or they keep their arms or hands midline. Let's look at visual ability. First, I'm gonna discuss orientation. The ability to be alert, to follow, and fixate on appealing and complex visual stimuli. Basically, they stare at faces. They are nearsighted. They see best at eight to 15 inches away. And they should be able to track side to side. Now I will discuss the auditory ability. As newborns hear a sound, the heart rate increases and it may elicit a startle reflex. If the baby likes the sound, they will awaken and search for the source. 
All babies are tested for hearing prior to discharge from the hospital. Now we're going to review olfactory and taste. The newborn is able to select people by smell. They can distinguish the smell of their mom's milk from other milk by the first week of age. They are also able to respond selectively to different taste. Uh, sugar actually increases their sucking and then suck patterns are different for breastfeeding and bottle feeding. This concludes part three assessment and care of the newborn.